welcome to another edition of Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo. Today I'm talking to William Jawando and Sterling Crockett about civic engagement within the African-American and minority community. Gentlemen, welcome to Mon uh, Mosaic, an African-American <laughs> perspective, as they say. Thanks so much for taking time away from your busy schedules to join me today uh, to talk about civic engagement. But before we get started, Tell me a little bit about how you both got started and became so passionate about civic engagement. Now, William, you know I'm going to start with you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't how did know you that, become so so passionate about civic engagement? First, thank you for uh, having us on the show, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've watched your show thank in the you. past, so thank we're, you. We're, we're I'm sorry. Big big fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it's it's been a lifelong journey, uh, mm -hmm. civic engagement, and and it's one of these things that's connected back. I can take it back to my childhood. I can think about when I was 13 years old, my uh, best friend was shot and killed here in yeah. Silver Spring, two okay. doors down from my house. Uh, I remember sitting in his funeral thinking, okay, we're the same person, but why is he there and I'm here? Right. Uh, and over time, I, that was anger. It developed into then questioning the circumstances around poverty, around educational opportunity, mm -hmm. around housing, transportation availability, all the things that I come found out later impacted why he ended up dead and mm -hmm. why I had other opportunities. Uh, and so I can really trace my career of public service and civic engagement and community organizing to that moment. Uh, you know, it's why I became a lawyer. It's why I uh, studied sociology in undergrad. It's right. why I, when I was at Catholic University, I started the NAACP chapter there to organize mm -hmm. the black community uh, at the school and, and, and around the school. Uh, and so it's really because I've, I've seen that when you're disconnected, when you don't have opportunity, uh, it leads to bad outcomes. And right. so it's kind of been a lifelong journey of development. Yeah, I didn't know at 13 that that was what I was going to do. But as, you know, as I've reflected on my, what, I've, what I'm doing now, what I have done, I think it reflects back to, to that moment. Um, and then just the desire to, I'm from here, I'm from this area, I'm from Silver Spring, the desire to see people doing better in a place that uh, is very well off. You know, and oh, yeah. so, so I think I, if I had to compress it into uh, a couple of words, it would be going back to when I was a young man, mm -hmm. and just all the experiences have led which led me from that moment to now. Defining moments in our lives, mm -hmm. to say the least. Sterling, mm -hmm. how about you? Deborah, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, hosting us today. You're it's an honor welcome. to be here. Um, you know, for me, I grew up in a small town in Southwest Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of challenges and so forth, and. You know, we got by as a community, mm -hmm. and uh, the community uh, showed up so many times in my life and uh, uh, provided so many opportunities uh, that I've just, it's quite natural for me to, mm -hmm. to give back. While I've spent most of my career uh, in business as an entrepreneur and uh, had a couple of successful ventures and was at a crossroads to decide what I was going to do going forward. And uh, I wanted to uh, play the gifts that I had uh, gained, you know, mm -hmm. forward and uh, decided to, uh, you know, team up with Will uh, and, uh, you know, go in a bit of a new direction. That new direction landed you in a good place with a good person. So that's it very certainly nice did. to hear. That's it certainly nice did. to hear. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot Vice of, versa. A lot of folks talk about civic engagement and why it's so important to sustain African American communities as well as other underserved communities. But I, st I think that sometimes we don't quite know what civic engagement is. What is civic engagement, Sterling? Well, to me, it, it, it extends beyond the political process and voting and so forth. Uh, it's the empowering of voices in these underserved communities uh, to um, you know, fight for, you know, the change uh, that needs to come about and mm -hmm. so forth. I think it's quite tragic that, you know, so many in these underserved communities feel that, uh, and it's a little bit of a play on words, their voices don't matter. Right. You know, as right. you know, the, uh, the name of our organization is Our Voices Matter. Right. But uh, I think at, at all levels, uh, you know, the, uh, the community as, as a collective, uh, you know, uh, empowers itself when it shows up mm -hmm. to advocate for its own issues, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm quite honored to to be part of that process. Well, you mean you want to add anything? To yeah, that? I, I would just. I think Sterling's right on, but I, it's one of these def words that a lot of people either attribute a definition to it or not sure what it means. I think you know broadly, it's being engaged in in your community at, right. and, and at all levels. Right. Uh, you know, 
there's certainly the political and voter aspect of it, which mm -hmm. uh, is a piece. But also, uh, you know, your local, uh, you know, your PTAs, your absolutely uh, your your uh, civic associations in mm -hmm. your neighborhood. Um, you know, your local pool. I mean, it, it's just being at connected to the civic and social life of your community, mm -hmm. uh, which we know over time accrues benefits to your community. That's right. Um, and so, to the to the extent that people are disconnected from that, uh, they the community it shows. Uh, if you're not voting, you don't get attention. If you're not at the planning board meeting. The, uh, you don't get the best transportation route. If you're not right. advocating in the schools, you might not get the amenities or the, the new court or the new computer lab. You know, so it's, yes. The, the, yes. you can go down the list and if you're not engaged, um, it's, it's, it's gonna show up. It is gonna show up. Do you believe that civic engagement, or as I like to call it, I form my new, my new own buzzword, <laughs> civic empowerment, because I mm -hmm. really believe that that's what civic responsibilities and duties do, they empower individuals. Do you think that they can it can affect change, and if so, what kind of changes? Yeah, no, I think uh, that's our that's the bet we're making, and, and, right. and the good thing is is that it's it's not a new concept, right? There's mm -hmm. you you can see it working in certain places. You can see it working in Montgomery County uh, right. in certain parts of the county, right, right where people are more engaged. Right. Um, uh, I I give you just a uh, a small example in the, on the political side. You you can directly look at the communities that are most uh, affluent and have the most amenities and, mm -hmm. and have the most going on as far as community activities and mm -hmm. vibrant uh, you know uh, social life and other things you can almost map that to where people are turning out and voting right you know and so and and that's you have to know that that's related to that politicians and policymakers and it's the smart thing to do from their perspective. They're going to go where people are engaged and of engage course. with those people because you have to. You have to choose. And I just ran for office. You have to choose. Who am I going to talk to if I want to get elected? I'm going to. I'm going to spend the majority of my time talking to people who I know are going to vote. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so. And once the decision's made, it's too late. And so, mm, yes. you know, engaging in the conversation, uh, letting your voice be heard, mm -hmm. you know, will should impact the uh, you know policy decisions that are made. I think there's just too many times uh, I see in society where there's this air of uh, victimization, uh, and um, you know, it's uh, the community can be part of that process, defining the solutions and so forth, and be a part of that solution. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, the times you feel most empowered and the most active and the most committed mm -hmm. is when you're part of the decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. How important is civic engagement to an individual's success? I'm just I'm curious about that because you know you hear yeah. so many people talk about, I wanna get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, you see college kids, you know, these days, back in my day, if you will, you had an entire, almost a portfolio of everything that you did, you know, volunteerism. But now mm -hmm. I don't see that as much. But talk a little bit about how important civic engagement is to a person's mm -hmm. success and how does it help to develop and shape leadership and capabilities? Well, I think it's extremely, uh, extremely important to individual success. But uh, I may, may use um, uh, another word, let's see. Uh, First of all, it's we've been so uh, focused, uh, you know, recently on individual success. Very okay? true. And I think I, I see uh, us entering a period where we're kind of moving away from that and people are more focused on, well, how do I use my gifts to l lift up my, my community? Mm -hmm. um, just to, to share a personal story, I mean, I was able to get my education because someone in my community uh, anonymously paid my tuition oh my. for one year and so uh, that has allowed me to mm -hmm. uh, access uh, things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity mm -hmm. but more importantly has put me in a position where I can reach back and pull over pull pull up all others and uh, and and give back I would just add you know I think it's critical to your how your self-worth and mm -hmm. how you think about yourself uh, you, you see because I think one of the challenges of civic engagement is you, the, one of the barriers to entry is thinking that one, you're knowledgeable enough to enter into the civic and social life, right. and two, thinking then after, if you do think you can have an impact, uh, are, is it going to work? Mm -hmm. Am I going to fail? Are people going to listen? Is it, am I right. going to get the outcomes I want? And so I think through that process of realizing one, you do have power, your voice has power to impact not only your life but the life of community members mm -hmm. and others in your community, mm -hmm. and then uh, 
taking that and going on that journey and seeing something, you might fail sometimes, but seeing something work, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you changed an action or an activity or you got a policy passed or you got a bill mm -hmm. introduced, whatever the, the marker of success is, I think is extremely important for especially young people oh, yeah. uh, to see. Um, and, and so we're hoping to ignite some of that with, the, with our mm -hmm. organization. You know, I'm glad to hear you say that because in recent years, you know, we've seen young people become more energized about social issues, but it's more so due to the increase of racial tension. Right. And you know, you hate to see, you, you're, you're glad to see the engagement, you really are, but you hate to see the purpose or the reason behind it. Talk a little bit about why it's important for the young people to become civic minded and engaged. I want you to expound upon that just a bit. Yeah, I can start if you want. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's. I think it's so. We just celebrated uh, 50 years. That's right. A bloody Sunday uh, recently here, and we were tweeting my wife and I and others. Uh, it was a popular hashtag. Selma is now. Selma right. is now. That's right. And I think to your point about a lot of the folks are entering in, young people are entering into the social discourse and uh, public policy debate at the point of criminal justice or racial issues, mm -hmm. which are mm -hmm. critically important and right. should not be, you know, should be addressed. Right. But my hope is that uh, as they do, they'll see, one, that these things are connected, right? That it, it, if you fix, if you get body cameras, that doesn't necessarily give someone a job. That's right. It doesn't get them a good education. Mm -hmm. That's right. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't address their housing needs. So how I think they'll quickly see, and you're seeing this happen, like as people engage at that point, because you need a. We talk, we started talking about key moments in lives mm -hmm. and Black Lives Matter and people seeing people that are look like them shot and killed, and that motivates them to get in. But as they get in, I'm hoping that we can help them see that there's tie-ins to a lot, of, a lot of other issues as well. Right, it all works together. I mean, you can deal with the, uh, you know, law enforcement issue, but there's still issues of economic empowerment. Oh, of course. You know, we don't get to choose the issue, but when the issue brings us together, we have to have the conversation in a way that we deal with the problem holistically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Will said, I mean, that's what we're hoping to influence. You know, that word holistically is so important because it's about that, you know, that collaborative effort that we're putting forth in an order. You know, we see that. You know, we see everything from the streets of New York to the, you know, streets of D.C. And like you said, over the weekend with Selma, the 50th anniversary of, of Bloody Sunday, I mean, it was just an amazing turnout because you have an opportunity to see so many people coming together right. in that one small place right. in order to um, commemorate how significant that was in our history. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, later on during the program about continuing civic engagement and about young people and how to stay energized about it, more importantly. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about how important it is for African American women to be able to stay involved in civic engagement. Not only that, organizations we can talk about like the NAACP, the National Council mm -hmm. of Negro Women, mm -hmm. and other organizations that, as folk like to say, are they still around now? Well, before we go to commercial, I know we're about to. The funny, the interesting thing about Selma mm -hmm. is that we're celebrating the anniversary of a march that led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act, right, voting rights which is now laying right. on the floor almost disabled, mm -hmm. you know, as far as what the Supreme Court has done. In a, in a, and then you take it back to Maryland and Montgomery County, where we have some of the lowest turnout in 30 years. And that's what we're going to talk about, too. For those of you who've just tuned in, you're watching Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo, and I'm talking to William Jawando and Sterling Crockett. After a short break, we'll be right back with more conversation about civic engagement. <laughs> NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor and make a difference in the life of a child for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. 
Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Welcome back to Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm here with William Jawando and Sterling Crockett discussing the importance of advocacy and civic engagement, especially in traditionally underserved communities. Gentlemen, before we went to break, we were talking a, little, a lot about civic engagement and about young people especially. And we'll start back to what you were talking about because I think we left off talking about how we can be, young people can be civic minded and engaged. Yeah. I think, you know, we were talking about how certain uh, traumatic incidences like the Black Lives Matter, Tamir right. Rice, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, yes. how those can be entry points into civic engagement mm -hmm. for young people across the country. Uh, we've seen it here in Montgomery County. I've been I've spoken with a lot of youth uh, who are upset uh, and starting to see connections to the achievement gap, connections oh, yes. to opportunities in housing. And so I think uh, these these events are important. And one of the things we're focused on, Sterling and I, and, and our team at Our Voices Matter, is how do we identify folks that have this interest, you know, they have that fire lit, mm -hmm. and then and then or and then cultivate it, you know, to show mm -hmm. them, give them the technical expertise around advocacy, around mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. uh, knowing how to approach a, me a member of Congress or a state legislator or a county executive, uh, and to advocate around issues that are impacting their community. So combining that passion with some some technical expertise and advocacy that will also develop them as leaders and make them more effective advocates in their community. Right. The other thing is, uh, you know, we have to be careful, uh, you know, historically when we've had these types of uh, events, uh, you know, the communities tend to burn themselves out in this That's space. True. That's true. And so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, you harness the, the, the energy and play it forward, you mm -hmm. know, to do, the, to do the real work that's going to make a difference in mm -hmm. people's lives. Mm -hmm. We were also talking a little bit about how important it is for African American women to become involved in civic engagement, like from the organizations I named earlier, the National Council of Negro Women, which I've been a member of for a number of years, and um, the uh, NAACP. You know, our, our parents, our family members were always advocates of those organizations and more, not to mention the smaller organizations that were started within the black church. Mm -hmm. You know, how important is it for African American women to become involved? Well, I think it's extremely important because one of the things that I've learned recently, you know, uh, is that yes, there are, there are issues with, uh, with black males. But right. there are equally issues with, uh, you know, young women of color yes, there are. Uh, as well. And so their voices have to be uh, activated and uh, mm -hmm. attention paid to their issues as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and, and, and actually uh, women of color, black women in particular, vote are the fastest growing voting population nationally out there. That's and, true. and they make up a large percentage of the Democratic primary. And uh, so, and oh, if you go back over our history, you know, mm -hmm. black women have been the backbone of all of our institutions and <laughs> yes. still are, whether it's yes. the church, right. the, the organizations like the NAACP and others right. that you mentioned, and I think that's still the case. So I think in a lot of ways we need to support them, as Sterling was saying, in their issues and catch the rest, uh, the rest of us need to catch up. Right. <laughs> and also there's some good, uh, there's some good examples of economic empowerment. You think about, uh, you know, women like Madam C.J. Walker, who Absolutely. is a very successful, yes. uh, you know, businesswoman and, uh, you know, there are, uh, uh, quite a few successful, uh, you know, women of color in business, uh, you know, today. Not to mention in the churches, in the black church throughout the uh, history, there have been so many women and men who have started businesses. You know, that's where a lot of us started our businesses, be it doing hair, right. be it doing, in, you know, uh, fundraising, anything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, when you look at the history of the black church, that's pretty much what how it, it sustained itself, right. you know, through those smaller, you know, yeah. entities there and then they come come together collectively right well my grandmother used to take me to church when I was a young young boy and uh, so that was just 12 years ago yeah about about that <laughs> a little longer maybe maybe 15 but uh, he but I good. remember yes, he does. but I remember uh, you know her and her colleagues from church uh, getting together uh, teaching one another That's to right. cook and That's so right. and so forth at the time you know a lot of them worked as you know, domestics, but oh, yeah, yes. yeah, they did empower, yes. you know, themselves, you know, collectively. So. And, and that's so important for our young people to understand that part of our history, I think, mm -hmm. and to, you know, take great pride in that because, you know, folks back then had a, a dignity and a presence about themselves that you right. knew when they were going to their jobs, they had clean clothes on, they had clean mm -hmm. shirts, and this is just, you know, something that I recall from my childhood, which was 
just a few years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. But I can remember that seeing people who had really good jobs, as they called it, right. post office, mm -hmm. uh, you know, teachers, you know, things like that. They were so proud about what they did, no matter what they did for a living. They were proud about it, and they yeah. would come home, and they would focus on the things that had to be done in the home and at the church and in their civic groups. Mm -hmm. you know? They took care of one another. They yeah. took care of one another. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. I will say, on the uh, we, d we do need to modernize in some, in some of these organizations, just to your point. I agree. I'm a former college pre chapter president for the NAACP and uh, was a vice president of the D.C. branch for a while uh, when I was living there in law school. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, great history, great organization, great legacy, great work, but oftentimes but, yeah. uh, the strategies, the tactics we use to engage millennials, young people are not, haven't caught up and, 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 and you know we need to be they a part of that. We had know. the same conversation at the National Council of Negro Women too. I've heard the same conversations. I was a section president, a section president for years and for a couple years in Columbus, mm -hmm. and we talked about the same thing such as doing things like implementing strategic plans mm -hmm. and that was so important to do because you know everyone was kind of running by the seat of their pants so right. to speak you right. know and that's not the way you run an organization yeah. you know right. you, you know people have a tough time making the adjustment to learning those things you know in yeah. a way to do do it better yeah. right. how should the african-american community strengthen its efforts in the areas of leadership development voter registration and we talked a little bit about this mobilization and turnout William I'm gonna focus that question to you first sure I think uh, a couple things. Partnership is key, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you have, uh, we, we were talking about some other organizations, a lot of times, we're starting a new organization, yeah. so I'm aware of that. Okay. But I think your, uh, our voices matter, but you're only as good as the ability to collective, have collective action and leverage each other's strengths yes. together. Um, and so we're gonna be laser focused on the skills and the training around civic engagement. Mm -hmm. But if we're gonna work on uh, uh, if we're going to work on housing issues, we're going to go talk to the groups that focus on housing and partner with them. If exactly. we're going to work on education, we're going to partner with education groups. Exactly. So I think marshalling our resources, uh, not being, uh, putting your egos aside, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to work together uh, in a way that we know that we can move the agenda forward. And then having, like you said, having a, a strategic plan, a shared agenda. A shared you know, agenda, the, for, yes. For the collection of folks that care about the same types of issues, I think right. is critical. Right. Right. As well as uh, amongst organizations, right. you know. So, oh, yeah. uh, and we're already starting the process of aligning ourselves with uh, other organizations uh, uh, as we do this work because it allows everyone to play to their strengths. I really want to talk. Speaking of your organization, I want to talk more about that. Talk about your organization. Uh, what is, our voices matter. Sure. Yeah, our voices matter. Our voices and matter. I'll, ki I'll kick, matter. kick to my executive director here shortly. <laughs> okay, executive um, director. <laughs> you know, uh, so, but it, it's, uh, we founded this organization. Uh, for me, it, it's kind of like we talked about my lifelong journey. It started, but it really came to a point when I ran for office recently, and mm -hmm. I would knock on doors in communities like White Oak and Long Branch, where I grew up, mm -hmm. and people were almost shocked to see me. They, you're soliciting my vote for what? Wh there was a combination of what are you, I don't understand what you're running for. Uh, why are you here talking to me? Oh, my goodness. And okay. if I do talk to you and, and vote, what is it going to do what for me? What is it going to do for you me? Know? And so... I, you know, just the realization that the communities that are hardest hit and the disparities we have in this county and in this state are a direct result of not, not being civically engaged. So mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to, on the heels of that, start an organization that would focus in underserved communities, mm -hmm. give, uh, empower, work with them to identify issues that matter to them, mm -hmm. and then give them the tools and the ability to advocate on those. And, and I think uh, I, I'm so glad to partner with Sterling, who brings a great business acumen and passion for these issues mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to be a good team as we start to engage folks. I agree and uh, you know for me this is a bit of a departure you know uh, but I uh, you know feel that the skills that I developed in business and so forth equipped me well to do this you know to do this type of do this type of work. Mm -hmm. um, again it's you mentioned before about struggling and the dignity in your struggle. Yes. And, uh, you know, growing up, uh, I had difficulties, but as a community, there was a dignity to, to our struggle yes. and so forth. And one of the things that was really important is that we, that we didn't squander the That's resources right. that we had That's and right. the things that we had in our control. And your vote is certainly in c your control. Uh, your voice and how you use it is certainly in your control. Who you partner with, what you, what you uh, decide to take on is certainly in your control. And so uh, that's the attitude that I will bring to, you know, to my work as direct, executive director 
of Our Voices Matter. You both bring so much to Our Voices Matter. Is there a, a website that uh, folks can visit? We are officially launching uh, in, in a week. In a so, week? So okay, hopefully good. when this is, yes, we, Our Voices Matter Maryland. Our voices, our voices matter org, actually, org. Org. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. Okay. And now I'm going to have to correct Will because it's actually our voices matter MD.org. Yes. Okay. Abbreviated. Our Abbrevi voices matter MD.org. MD. See, that's why I got, that's why I got <laughs> for it. You know, precise as a team, blank. <laughs> yeah. um, well, one, we, one of the things, the other thing about our voices matter is we want to lower the barrier to entry. Uh, okay. You know, and you know, like I said, you have these challenges of one, understanding the system, civic system in which you operate and live. Right. Two, uh, so that's an education component. Two, realizing that you do have the power to, to change it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then three, connecting you with the skills and tools to do so. Mm -hmm. And then and making it con in an environment that is conducive for you. You know, one of the things, we t we're going to have community forums around the county. And we're, gonna, we're looking into things like child care. Uh, so people can actually come. You know, you have. Of course. It's hard to be civically engaged if you if you if you're picking up, you're taking the bus and you're That's taking right. your kids home. And so, uh, we're going to be partnering with organizations that do that. So we're going to be look, looking. How do we lower the barrier of entry and get people who are traditionally not involved mm -hmm. involved? Talk a little bit about civic engagement and how it needs to change. I know that's a. That, that's probably a, can, comes with a laundry day, yeah. list. Of course <laughs> it does. In other words, how do you, as the game changers, make it fresh? <laughs> like you said, we're going to be here for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of the, the uh, you know, one of the things is, you know, new blood. You know, getting, getting uh, you know, people involved in a renewed way. Uh, Will mentioned some of the issues that, uh, that we believe are important, but I mm -hmm. think the one thing uh, that's going to distinguish us a, a bit is in our community forums. We hope to learn directly from the community. What are the what are the issues that are that are impacting mm -hmm. you know your community mm -hmm. and, and how you would like to get involved? Mm -hmm. And that's an important component. Yeah. Well, you, do you and I would anything? just say in addition to that, eliciting feedback from the community, but also like I said, lowering the barriers so making it so people can actually participate. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll be a difference because right. civic engagement now is usually done at six p.m. On a weekday, you know, and, yes. and when when most people who are working low income underserved community cannot that's right. come, that's um, right. and so we're going to be looking to do things out of the box. We're we're also uh, going to actually be doing this year round. You know, a lot of times you find people they come knock on your door, you know, two months before an election. Mm -hmm. But w you know, we're two years away from election, and we're going to be doing this work to build up the capacity so that when the election comes, you have an informed. Uh, community and uh, participants and folks in that community that know that they can impact and speak to people who are making decisions and make informed decisions. So I think a, a combination of you know lowering the barrier, speaking to people where they are, hearing from them, not telling them, mm -hmm. right, and then also uh, making sure that we're doing this year round in a continual effort. Right. Well, it looks like, gentlemen, I'm going to have to ask you to come back. This has been a fantastic <laughs> show. Thank right. you so much for coming to join me today. Unfortunately, that's about all we have time for today. And I'd like to thank my guests, William Jawando and Sterling Crockett. I'm Deborah Milo. Please join us again next month for another edition of Mosaic, an African-American perspective. Until next time, make it a positive day. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. For those dealing with the struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. Visit aarp.org caregiving for advice and support.